22 or 23? Whichever it is, Mike will write it out. Uh, so we have a question. Uh, yesterday I did a BJJ Fanatics podcast. I think it's going to come out about a month Ross with Ryan Ross Ford. Huh? Ross Ford, not BJJ Fanatics. Ross BJJ, Ford. no, no. BJJ no. Fanatics. Oh, okay. uh, and um, his question, he had a question, and I tried to explain, but I was not on the mat, so I kind of was trying to explain on the system that we were using. How do you get a guy, a stocky guy, that, uh, you know, a wrestling, a wrestler that's stocky, doesn't have a, bit, uh, a whole lot of neck. How do, you, uh, how do you engage them in a split guard, especially when they're passing? Because a lot of times they like to control the legs and try to control the hips using a lot of power and drive. So uh, we're going to focus on two things when we're doing that. You need to focus on the head to make sure that the head does not help controlling so usually the the arms the elbows are used to controlling the legs and the hips and the head is usually used to control the upper body a little bit uh, so if we get in trouble we start to attack the head but the biggest thing that i'm focusing on is to stretch him out so a lot of times people are very strong when they have their elbows fairly close to the torso and right angle meaning roughly 90 degrees this is very very strong here they're still very strong when things start to flare out sideways and arms stretched out past 90 degrees, that's when they start to get weak and they no longer have the power to control your movement as much. So that's what I'm focusing on. The reality is it's going to be somewhat of a battle because, you know, if you got a guy that's skilled and, and knows how to use his body and how to control yours, it's not going to be easy, but uh, you need to make sure that you set things up. First, when I go against a guy that I know is kind of like, tight passer I move so I don't just kind of like say okay let's 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 go if you let this you're already in a hole so we're gonna we're gonna figure out how to what happens if you if you kind of get yourself in this type of hole yeah <laughs> all right so that's a hole you don't want to put yourself in a hole and, and a lot of people do that they're like oh my technique is so good yeah, it might be good, but once you're in a deep enough hole, that technique is no, long, no longer going to be helping you that much because you let him progress too far. So a lot of times when I go with somebody, even if I, if I, if I believe he's got a better takedown than me, um, I will generally try to pop up. I play this popping up and popping back down to make sure I keep the distance. So I don't start here. This is, this is a rough place to start. Yeah, immediately you get control. So if that happens, I will try to shoot my legs through. But I don't start in a position where I'm where he's able to sort of. So I frame and I try to get my feet on the hips. If he starts to control my legs, I'm gonna. So initially I wanted to frame. So you can always attack the five-finger guillotine. It's always an option. But you need to have his head in a, in a good position. <laughs> so I start to frame. So here my frame is a little bit better than before. So go back down. So here you can make a judgment call. Do I have the five-finger guillotine or reverse rear naked choke? You need to use your head to make sure his head doesn't pop out. But the frame is weak. If he postures up, your frame is a little stronger. I can move. Now, if you cannot use... So if he postures up and you've... Now my frame is weak. So what I'll have to do is I have to now start to move my hips. I, and I just need a slight movement. So he still has the underhook, but you can see what's happening to his elbow and how his arms. So I'm working to make sure that his arms go past 90 degrees, but also that they flare out. So even if he, he can maintain 90 degrees, if they flare out, that's, that starts to get weak because now the power comes more from the shoulders rather than kind of from the core, all right? So I'm looking for two. I'm looking for stre stretching him out and also flare out his elbows. Now he's weak. I will feed, my foot goes on the hip, and now I can either go into split guard or hit him with an immediate triangle, so almost skip the split guard. And I'm going for a triangle. So let's look at it again. So guys, first thing you need to do is don't start in a position where the guy can dom dominate Im immediately. So if, I, if I'm here, so if, I'm, if my head is 
up a little bit, I can s do things. If you sort of sit up where you're leaning backwards, you're very, very weak here. So my, my frame is very weak here also. So the frame no longer is valid. If his head was a little bit lower, I'm gonna immediately hit him with a five finger guillotine. But if it's not, I have a weak frame, so I start to go into moving. Now, I know that what he's gonna try to do is use this to control my hips, which is fine. I, but I flared out his elbow to a point where he's no longer strong, and I'm gonna attack. Yeah, go ahead, let's play this out. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. No. Let's see. You got no neck, so I'm going for the arms. So, again, I basically make sure that I create movement right off the bat. If I know somebody, especially with, it's the same game with big guys. You're going with somebody that's 250, 260, significantly bigger than you. Move, move, and start to move. And I'm, I'm okay to play guard as long as I have movement. So I initially create some distance. So if I can put my foot on the hip, he needs to deal with this. If he doesn't, anytime I have the opportunity, he starts to back away a little bit, I'm wrestling up. Okay? So anytime I feel he's backing away too much, I'm wrestling up. If I'm wrong, so again, I create movement and popping up. He's not backing away. He starts backing away. I wrestle up. He uses his strength to bring me back down. I now, again, focus on attacking that arm because I knew his body was not in a good posture. That's one. I managed to flare out his elbow, and I use my leg for that. And now I'm in a good position to attack with split guard. Again, it depends what he gives me. Most often, high-level guy is going to just literally put himself into an opada, and we got the attack. Yes. <laughs> so that's some of the philosophy that I use to set up somebody for split guard. Um, the split guard is actually highly effective against guys that t like to t pass tight with underhooks. It's highly effective, but you cannot let them get an underhook where they're like this, controlling your hips and controlling the underhook. Again, I need to get their elbows once. Notice what happens if, even if my hands get connected, once my elbows flare out, that grip starts to break. Uh, so I'm working on this and stretch at the same time. That's the whole foundation behind uh, the split guard, whether it's upside down arm bar, reverse arm bar, urigatame, razor arm bar, whatever you want to call it. Again, that I'm flaring out his elbow or split guard, which is now the hand is under the armpit. I don't know if Ryan's tuning in. Uh, in Better Sao Paulo, be. I don't know. In Brazil, I don't know what the what the time difference is. Maybe two hours. I think so. You don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> 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 uh, I hope that explains the question. And we have a question from Stan. He's asking, "How are you holding the trapped arm before you hit a mounted triangle? The arm I intend to keep in the triangle slips out a lot on higher level guys." Yeah, that's that's a good question. So uh, anytime I'm attacking mounted arm, uh, triangle or mounted arm bar, I don't concern myself with holding on to the arm. I control them with my legs. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make, and it's whether it's mounted or whether it's a triangle from the guard. By the way, guys, I do have a split guard instructional on BJJ Fanatics and triangle instructional on BJJ Fanatics. Anyways, anytime you're attacking a triangle, or even arm bar, I don't hold on to the arm, whether it's from the top or whether it's from the bottom. I let my legs and body positioning control where his arms are, and they usually be right between where, where they're supposed to be, between your legs. Only once I fully secure control, at that point I attack the arm. The big mistake people make is they try to hold on with the, to the arm, sometimes two on one and holding on, and now they don't have the ability to move Number one, and number two, they don't have the ability to control the position. And usually, once you, got, once you go, you're mounted and you hold on to both arms, uh, to, to his arm with both arms, the guy knows this is the thing that I have to defend. Everything else is secondary. So you're basically telling him what's most important on the defensive side. 
and that's why you lose it. So let's look at it from So a lot of times he, he, he ducks the arm under, so I'm doing a mounted triangle. Notice that I'm pinching, I'm not worried about this. Because if I, I don't, if I try to hold on, I don't have stability. He can squirm out. I don't really care. I control about securing the triangle first. I don't care where he puts his arm, whether he puts it, hides it there, wraps my, I don't really care. I hold my shin. I will, generally speaking, and now I will turn my attention to the arms or the choke, whichever one comes first. Um, it's the same thing when I go for a mounted arm bar. So again, when I go for a mounted arm bar, I don't really care about the arm. Look. Oh, that was, was that a good crack? Yeah, it was a warm-up crack. It was a warm-up crack. So I don't really care. Same thing from, uh, from the guard. Um, if I go perpendicular guard, yes. Here, I don't really care about that arm. My legs secure it. Once it's secure, I, whether it's here or whether it's under my armpit, I can go into it for the break. But right now, I'm controlling the position with my legs. Uh, same thing with the triangle. So once I decide to go for a triangle, look, I'm not, hold, I'm not concerned with his arm or know exactly where it is. I use my legs to make sure that it stays where it is. So I don't post on the floor, there's a big gap. I post on him so there's no gap. And my upper part of my leg blocks his arm from withdrawing. I concern about myself making sure I grab my shin, get my body positioning, and now I don't really care where that arm is. I hardly ever touch that arm that I'm attacking, whether it's for a triangle, whether it's for a uh, uh, arm bar, and whether it's from the top or bottom, doesn't matter. I generally put my body and the legs in position. Then I can devote, then I can turn because now he cannot escape. Now I can figure out who I triangle him, do I arm bar him, I, how, how I finish. I control the position, not the, the arm. It's very difficult two on one to hold somebody's arm when they're like twisting around. And also you give it away the idea that, okay, this is the one thing I need to defend. They already know that, that that's being set up. I don't really care. Again, same thing as say, if I go for a, for an arm bar, just stand up. And if he pulls that arm out, no problem. I'm switching into a reverse triangle. So I'm more concerned about what's between my legs. How do I, how do I lock up that structure that it stays solid? And then I can figure out, okay, what is the submission? Back triangle is the same way. I don't really, you know, I, I will grip fight to try to get into a rear naked choke position. But if it's difficult, I will try to switch either, either into an arm bar, which he gives me if he goes flat, or I will lock up a triangle and then the, the grip fighting is done. One arm is out of the way and the other one is trapped. I hope that answers the question. And <clears throat> Diego de la Garza is saying, I just want to thank you for showing your knee on belly escape where you back roll and take the leg. I could even do it on my bad side. Oh, nice. I don't remember when I did it or how I did it, but. <laughs> 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 for what's knee on belly, but. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Related to the triangle. Kevin Abraham is asking, what do you do when you are getting stacked in the chat triangle? I don't. I don't get stacked. We've covered that. Because I concern myself with, so usually I will use a split guard to set it up. Once I'm here, yeah, they need to stack me. I maintain that 45 degree angle to him. If this is Guys, this is not the, the best way to do a triangle. If I do, if I do it square on, now I can be stacked. But if I cut the, first of all, this is way stronger choking power, okay? But I cannot be stacked because he's driving in this direction where towards his head. I'm sideways. So, again, if 
you are triangling people straight on, and that includes jamming his head deeper into your crotch. I don't believe that is the most effective way to finish a triangle. And you subject yourself to two very bad, bad possibly things. Well, three. One is pick up and slam. Second one is to get, get stacked. And then third one is to just kind of where the guy just twists and your legs sort of pop open. So I, I don't advocate triangle lined up. You need to have that 45 degree angle. Enrique can attest to it. I train with basically mostly black belts, mm -hmm. high level guys. And once I lock up that triangle, it's done. It's done. There's people don't escape. So it's effective, and, and, and I'm very frustrated by the fact that a lot of people in the world, in jiu-jitsu world do not use triangle because it's not effect, effectively working for them. The problem with that is, is with your setup and your body positioning and how you actually finish that submission. It's not, it, it, the triangle is not the best, uh, is not the, uh, uh, the problem. It's, I think it's evolved quite a bit, and I think uh, a lot of, Academies is still being taught in a very rudimentary way, and and I, I I if you do it this way, high probability a skilled guy will escape, and people just give up on it, not because, uh, and I think it's it's because it doesn't work for them. So this is a lot of times this is how it's how it's taught in a lot of places. Yeah, it works. <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance to escape. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. Uh, let's, let, let me at least set it up. <laughs> well, let me at least lock it up, okay? But watch. He's going to escape, and he's slightly groggy. He overslept. His alarm was not on today, so. Let me, let me lock well, it up at you're least. You were setting it up. I know, but at least <laughs> you can see how easy it is to, to escape. Come on, we're going to make it difficult. We're, going to, we're making it real. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to do it my way. And I'm not going to squeeze. I'm just going to give him plenty of time. I could squeeze a lot harder. If he tries to stand up, I go under his leg. You can see his movement is completely nullified. So the advice I have for you is buy the freaking DVD <laughs> or go through all the episodes that we've done because we've covered this at least three times. Just, just type in Silver Fox BJJ uh, Triangle on YouTube and I, I guarantee you at least 10 episodes are going to pop up and you can go through it and figure it out. But I believe that most people, more than 50% of the people in the jiu-jitsu world are using uh, are doing triangles that will work against a uh, untrained person that doesn't know anything sometimes uh and it, it's not going to work against uh you know skilled practitioner and meaning somebody blue belt good blue belt and above it's not going to work and they people give up on it they don't consider it a high high percentage submission it is it is and one last question before we close out this is from Angsberg, he's asking, uh, what options are there from top of side control when you pin the, the near side arm with your leg? Well, there's a lot of options. So, if, if my hand is under, I could always go uh, baseball bat choke. Um, I can sort of start to drive across and either attack Americana, modified Americana, um, I can notice how I fed it from one leg to the other. So he, so even though I start with my right leg pinning it, I switch to my left. I can go into Kimura. I can go into, you know, far, far side arm bar. So there's a lot of options. Yeah, I think any time in top side control. So a lot of times when I'm top side control, I try to get under this arm. So I try to get under the arm. Of course, the guys know that, you know, yeah, so if he defends, I will pin it, and I'll just, you know, swim as, depending, you know, I can all, you know, start to switch into arm triangles, 
So there's a lot of things. Uh, I think it's just a good policy that if any time you can, pin that arm. All right, guys, uh, and we're out of time. I know I saw Mike. Uh, we're out of time. I uh, next week I'm doing a, a BJJ camp in Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let me make that sign with something else. Uh, so we'll try to figure out what we're gonna do with the episode. Probably we're gonna do a compilation. Uh, if you have any suggestions, write them down uh, under this episode. I usually check the comments for about a week and then I'm moved to the next episode. <laughs> uh, and then I'll be back. So uh, next week's probably going to be compilation, depending partially on, on if there's any specific questions or specific demands. All right, guys, I hope to see you soon and uh, stay well. Follow, like, yeah. share, subscribe, uh, subscribe, buy the DVD, BJJ, vote, <laughs> wave, and so <laughs> forth. We'll see you next time.